Okay, good morning, buenos dias, guten tag, or good afternoon, and welcome everybody. Good evening for some people, of course. I'm very pleased to introduce Diana, the, sorry, Daniela, Daniela Brill. Um, Daniela Brill Estrada comes to us originally from Colombia, and she brings her collaborators with her to talk about borders. So Natalia and Carlos are here joining her. Uh, and just very briefly to introduce Daniela, uh, I met her almost two years ago, actually very briefly, uh, at an exhibition that she was part of with a project called Our Celestial Bodies. And it so impressed me before I even met her because it was just so elaborate and complex and thoughtful. So I really wanted to meet this artist. And um, I was working with Monica Lucasio, who is part of Suratomica and uh, the whole group of students. At, at that point, she was still a student at the Angevante. And we started this uh, nice dialogue um, last uh, year. Uh, actually, it feels like last year, a few months ago. Uh, when I was setting up the installation in the same museum, uh, Daniela was there helping. And then I got to really know her deeper. So I'm very pleased to have you here, Daniela. Welcome. And um, I will just pass it on to you to introduce what you want to talk about, which are very deep and heavy issues dealing with uh, our networks, the walls and borders and frontiers and this addresses so many issues for all of us globally. So I'll just pass it on to you and um, be on the sidelines to help along with questions or to lead the discussion. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you, Victoria. I'm also super happy uh, to be here. And I'm very, very uh, thankful that I could um, invite three amazing creative people from Colombia, from Suratomica, which is a project we're going to talk about later. Um, because we're going to be talking about a topic that is mostly uh, focused on the global south and Colombia as an example for it. Uh, Yes, I mean, the main topic, the big topic of this talk are the frontiers, the non-existent frontiers or the diluted borders, how the, the, the talk is called. And uh, it, it started because we all are working on the intersection or the frontier between art and science. And I think many of us here are. Um, so we ask ourselves about the frontiers between uh, the smallest parts of the universe and the biggest parts of the universe and how to connect it with art. Uh, I'm going to share, uh, I, we're going to share um, a blackboard mm -hmm. where we have collected uh, the information. Give me one second, please. So tell me if you can see it correctly. Yes, we see it perfectly. Perfect. So we're uh, working on the frontier between micro and macro world and between art and science. Uh, I've been working on this frontier of art and science for about 10 years now. And I have come to the conclusion that it is not a fixed frontier, but a more a permeable uh, membrane, which I think are most of the frontiers and borders in the world. Uh, the reason why we say they don't really exist is because if you look down a microscope, uh, like a lot down a microscope, you're going to come to the conclusion that there are no borders in matter. I mean, we already went to CERN, we work in collaboration with CERN, uh, and we see that in the most microscopic world of all of them, the atomic world and the energetic world, there are no borders. And it's the same if you look up the sky or even from the sky, for example, from the moon to the earth, you don't see a border. You don't see uh, if you think the ocean is the border between the two continents, it's because our human body doesn't allow us to cross that border so easily. But it's not really a border. It's just one thing. Uh, so now during the pandemic, we have encountered more uh, and different kinds of borders like 
very very uh, visual ones and very uh, that ones that you see and ones that you feel are, for example, the door of our house as the border between us and the outer world, like where we're safe and where everything's clean and the outer world where the, where the virus is. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the, the screen of our cell phones and of our computers that has become the border of the frontier with the other humans. So we talk through this uh, frontier and through this limit through this screen and of course the mask that we have to wear i mean this is uh, another kind of frontier that we think is helping and of course it is helping uh, like prevent the virus a little bit but it is not really like we said before uh, not really a, 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 a material frontier or border mm -hmm. so from there we go to the i mean the conclusion about this is that these frontiers are permeable membranes and in the connection between art and science we have uh, it, it's not not only a frontier or a membrane it's like an alchemical basal do you say that in english like like the alchemical place where both disciplines find each other and become something else and for us in suratomica this something new is a new horizontal way of knowledge creation which is capable of changing and destroying the frontiers and borders that we have created humans, which we believe uh, is uh, are, are the, the main source of many in, uh, like uh, any, uh, how do you say that like non equalities in the world. And so the uh, front just to interrupt you for a second, can, can you tell us a little bit to the audience about Suratomica, a, a bit of a background on Suratomica? Yes, uh, Carlos is going to talk about Suratomica much more deeper uh, okay. later on, but I can tell you Suratomica is a network of artists and scientists. And uh, I mean, the main focus is in Bogota, in Colombia, because it's where mm -hmm. we have the network of artists and scientists. Uh, not only in Bogota, in the whole country, mm -hmm. but it is completely international. So we do uh, international collaboration with institutions, with scientific institutions and artistic institutions all around the world. Uh, but Carlos is going to go a little bit deeper okay. into that topic uh, later. Thank you. So we see this uh, new something that is created in this border as a tool for social change. And why uh, we want to talk about this is because uh, during the pandemic, we don't only see these obvious frontiers that I was telling you about earlier, but we find the social frontiers to have become more and more clear and more and more obvious to everybody. So we see the, the, the border and the limit, uh, the human limit and the geographical limit and the religious and language and every kind of human created border between the global south uh, and the rest of the world. Like the fewer countries and places of the world that were lucky enough to have a healthy and good and safe quarantine. And if you see Bogota, uh, the, the quarantine in Colombia ended last week. It was the longest in the whole world. It lasted uh, a long, long time. Uh, and we don't have that um, in, the, in, the, in other places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's also why I invited uh, Natalia and Carlos and Catalina, because they are artists uh, working with science, like in this intersection and mm -hmm. trying to combine these two disciplines to create social change. And they are now in Colombia. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to invite Natalia first uh, to tell us, I mean, I think I, I forgot some things that I wanted to tell you, but I think later on we're going to be able to talk It'll about come up, So just make a note of it. <laughs> yes. So Natalia is a media artist. And in 2012, she created uh, Mutante Lab which is a laboratory for arts and new media in Bogota, in Colombia. And she's also uh, with me. We both uh, created and direct Suratomica, which is a project you were telling uh, about. And Natalia uh, is going to talk to us a little bit 
deeper about the geographical frontiers and uh, yes so for, also from her point of view of creation between the two disciplines mm -hmm. thanks thank you Dani and thank you Victoria and Telluric Vibrations for this space I'm really happy to join you here well, and well <laughs> I, I um, I've got to talk about a very difficult frontier, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not our usual topic, I, I must admit, in, in Mutante Lab and the work we have uh, developed here with, with Mutante in Bogota. But as Dani told you, I, um, we have realized that this is getting more and more important now and we have realized how connected it is to uh, the all the processes that we are developing here in Colombia. So um, I would like to use this short intervention to share some ideas about the geographical frontiers and some questions with, with you and, and the public. And so understanding that the frontiers are a result of the nature of our knowledge, uh, our culture, the way we read the world, we can recognize that uh, the social organization that we had before pandemics respond to that. Uh, we understand ourselves and the world through frontiers. And as I, of course, give art and science an important role through an art and science that may be enabling them. Some of the main frontiers uh, we have created, uh, some of the most obvious ones are the geographical, uh, which have been we can say an awful result of our political practices. Uh, we are fragmented, we are divided, and we are isolated now. We have been uh, told that national borders are a way to protect us before this, but before this current pandemic, we were prepared for the only possible scenario that nations knew, that is a war. Uh, and so many countries declared that. Um, some of, the, of them even said uh, a war against an invisible enemy. Mm -hmm. And I think even when the pandemic, when the COVID didn't take uh, that long to show us that there were not such borders between two countries, between our bodies and uh, the other living forms and among communities, all the frontiers that Danny just told us, Mm -hmm. uh, the only response we had as a society was to create more frontiers. So nation close, nations closed their borders, isolated themselves in a supposed autonomy, allowed the emergency state, uh, the only one they knew, which is one that drives towards uh, destruction of life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, responsibility was given to the so-called decision makers. I think actually the term decision makers is a way to endow responsibility to others. Um, and what does that mean for countries with an incipient democracy like Colombia and many others? Well, um, it, it will mean uh, an accumulation of power under the ghost of uh, the mentioned enemy, a reapparition of fascist thought and behavior that expresses in themselves from two different points. One point will be uh, what we call in Spanish, I don't really know the, the, the word in English, which will say will be something like policy uh, action, which is not the police itself, but when a civilian act like a police. Like a police. <laughs> so the policy role of individuals that use the pandemic as an excuse to prevail against others. Mm -hmm. And the second point will be, of course, the state. There are innumerable e extreme situations promoted here by the state, uh, what we call the recrudescence of the conflict, the abuse of power, totalitarian discourse and action, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that during these almost six months of what they call here the smart quarantine. Uh, Kata, uh, Kata will bring us a clearer image of that when she shared their, she's, um, her ideas. Mm -hmm. So it is relevant to bring to the discussion uh, and define what do those frontiers really mean 
for our global society. Uh, and it is a way to evade and those social responsibility to others. They are, we can say, control mechanisms, mechanisms that from one side impose inequity and from the other side hand over a responsibility to others based on that so-called autonomy. Mm -hmm. We are measuring the social inequality. As an example, we are measuring the, measuring the social inequality inside the countries and Colombia is at the top of the, of the social inequality. Uh, but social inequality is actually global. We are also counting the debts by country, but they are global too. Uh, and we are using this narrative of the nations to allow, to allow some to strengthen a rigid structure uh, that doesn't enable life at all. And just as an insight, I have shared this question with you in the board. Uh, I would like to ask, how is then the accumulation of wealth by the billionaire connected to them by the billionaires? Sorry, connected to the massacres that occur in the rural areas of Colombia. We are in a region here in Latin America that doesn't trust institutions, not before and not now. Most of us don't believe that a different person as the head of such a rigid political structure will mean any change. We are in a country where the politicians themselves assure that we can expect anything from our government, that we have to fend from, for ourselves. Uh, so we doubt the power of this uh, representative democracy, especially here. here. Um, and of course, um, other authoritarian organizations are not an option. So we wonder uh, if we can really do better than this. In this context, uh, here in Colombia and in many other Latin American countries, we have witnessed the constant emergence of self-organized communities uh, and groups that are based in mutual aid, uh, which have strengthened through the pandemic. I mean, not only now, but more now. And through eight years, uh, that I have worked with Mutante Lab, where, where I collaborate with Juan Diego Rivera, we have found and promoted the innumerable possibilities that open knowledge and collaborative creation in art and science bring. Even when we const constantly think about the urgency to act, we trust the long or medium term change, change based on ideas. Uh, and we understand that this more than ever is the context to propagate them in order to promote empathy and critical thinking. Uh, also, we think that we can modify uh, the way we are understanding ourselves and each other in our environment. Um, and that is something that we definitely can do while changing our thinking processes, even throughout science a science that allows us to understand and embrace complex complexity uh, and of course poetry. I propose uh, that we ask ourselves, um, I mean we that trust the power of the art and science collaboration or the indisciplinary collaboration, which is the one that doesn't uh, recognize these frontiers in the knowledge. Uh, how are our current art and science contributing to the emergence of the frontiers. And if they do, uh, how can we transform them? So how can we develop an art and science that allow us to structure uh, a different thinking model so we can structure uh, a social and political organization that um, above all enables life. Uh, so it will be a biocentered one. Thank you. I think, Victoria, you have your microphone off. Natalia, how does this relate to the scientific community? Do you find that uh, scientists are willing to work with you and also deal with these issues when you're talking about art science collaboration in Colombia? Yeah, I think it, it, it is mostly an invitation 
to, mm -hmm. to do so because uh, as as we think that art and science are important for the way we are understanding the world and the way we are organizing so we think from art and science we can create and propose a new way so we don't need to understand us and organize us with frontiers and um, I think we have an enormous power now with the science mm -hmm. and that's why we wondered if we really couldn't do better than this I mean uh, the scenario we have seen with the pandemics have been so um, I don't know the word incredible like it has been really tough especially in countries like ours so mm -hmm. that's why I think we we make this invitation and we have already work here in Colombia with the scientists to, mm -hmm. to think about this we are working now with them yeah so they are open to this kind of collaboration yeah right I, actually uh, we are really connected now to some um, research in complexity science great which i think carlos will share more yes. and that will be a really interesting point to um uh, to rethink or to you know just to think about a, a new way to understand thank you thank you victoria <laughs> thank you natalia for for um, your input uh, so yes this is a topic that is really close to our hearts so uh, and i i really really believe that uh, this is a tool for 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 change that what we're doing um, now we are going to go a little bit deeper into the awful truth of everything and uh, Catalina, who is an artist, um, uh, also from, from Colombia, uh, she will be talking to us um, about these issues a little bit deeper. Uh, Catalina works also a lot with education, like new ways of education in Colombia. Um, Cata? Can you talk? Welcome, Catalina. Hello, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Dani. And thank you, the festival. Like, thanks to the festival, uh, so we can be here for our presence. Okay. I'm going to share with you the cultural borders, which we thought to be very important uh, in this festival and uh, towards the theme of art and science, like this mixture. So what I'm sharing with you in this board is the, the, like the mental scheme, the mental map that I made to understand this theme of the cultural borders in, in this context. And I, I thought that it, it was very important for us to um, talk from this place from the uh, of the world like we are in colombia very far uh, from vienna and from los angeles and we do have uh, a very important border that is that that is image and culture and we do think that image is this ancient technology that exists like since like the beginning and since that first drawing that we made we had the power to communicate our our individual experiences with everybody so this technology has been evolving and uh i do want to have like a closer look to what image and what the image as a border and as a place of meeting has done to our culture and I do want to make this analysis because I think it's very important to watch um, like um, present reality and and be aware of the connections that culture art and science do have in the way that we are living life today I don't know if my internet connection is a little unstable or if it's good okay um, so, Dani, I don't know if you can look closer here, like to this set of images. Uh, yes, of course. Give me one second. And 
I thought this is this was important, like to share because um, the I do think that I do start it like every like my studies of this to, for this talk with the question of what are the relations between culture and the current unbalance in the world because we're not only watching the un, the unbalance on the virus effect but uh there is a very there are very several cri there are many several crises like in social ecological economical uh, dimensions so we have here the te the technology of image and i thought it was curious to watch how images in one place uh, mean different things in another place and how our reality has been influenced by this image of well-being like and of happiness and luxury displayed by cinema and by mass media and you will ask like well how can it be connected to your reality and how is it connected to violence in Colombia, but when misery meets this image from, from this place where we are not having like all our, of our rights respected and, you know, um, we don't have really, people here don't have access to knowledge, to water, to education. So, the way people approach to images is very important and very delicate and that interdependence is uh, like very important for art and science to be watching i don't know so i have these images of very wealthy famous uh people from los angeles and then i have these images of people here uh, mimicking that and narco culture is about mimicking and having these luxuries that we don't have here or people do not tend to have so image does have a distortion depending on time place and scale and that has very deep effects on society and from the point of view of images i wanted to danny can we go please to the other corner I wanted to talk about uh, what we are facing today. No, yes. Uh, and we are facing now during the pandemic, like one of the most violent periods of our history. And I wanted to share some images with you. So just so we understand like the complexity of image and the different interpretation and, and effects it has on reality of the different human groups and of the different individuals but um you in the united states uh, they there has been a murder this year that was very important and crucial like for um global environment like a ambiente like ambience i don't know how to say it better but and and this murdering of a black man was like a scandal in the in the whole world i wanted to tell you just that today i have these news here today a man was murdered uh, this one today uh, um, a man in bogota was murdered by the police in, uh, in very similar conditions to from george floyd from the ones that george floyd uh, died i don't know and it's important that we understand that we are sharing like complex situations but just the way that images flow and and the way uh, we watch them and and the places from from with from where we are watching them it change uh, the the way like the world works so uh, we thought that it was very important for us to show you this because it's a human condition that art and science do have implications in, you know, and we do have the power of observate, 
like of, of observation of experimentation of a projection of reality and image is a very powerful full technology that can help us to have uh, a more conscious like relation between uh, countries it's it's i don't know it's very strange to be talking like from this point of view of a country that has been like ignored and and everyone is like used to to hear uh, news like oh yes violence colombia drugs whatever but it's it's not a good thing to get used to and the the fact that here things are like this and that things are turning like more violent has like direct connection to what uh, people are experiencing in like first world countries and you're now kind of experiencing this crisis that, that we've been experiencing all the time actually viruses have been more present in this type of countries that in developed than in developed countries and um, so i do like to think as art as a kind of virus you know because it needs other organisms to survive and to spread and i think that an attitude for uh, for art and science can be that one of uh spreading different uh images and different possibilities of of uh, action and uh, like a, a for, a forms of reaction to what we think so this virus has uh, led us to a very critical time uh, around the world and i do hope we can evolve and we can use these practices uh, as adaptation mechanisms to to get to a better place where we all can be in a state of well-being not just in one place or another because that unbalance is what turns things around like this and um yes and um, yes i i think that's all maybe i skip some things but so, Catalina, uh, uh, I was curious, uh, Daniela mentioned that you're also involved in education, and when it comes to art and science or any kind of art education, imagery is so critical. Uh, how do you bring it into education so people have a wider view? Well, there are several practices, but um, I, for example, I'm currently working with um, teachers and uh, students to make a neuroscientist to make a pedagogic pedagogical suitcase that can that can get to children that have no internet right now, for nice. example. So, so it's, it's a way of thinking on their necessity, what the, what's happening right now, and how can we use science to make better images that can aid, for example, children in this moment in which they have no uh, access to information and, and are like in, inside their houses with no resources. Very nice. I'd love to see some of those pedagogic suitcases. It makes me think of Duchamp and his suitcases that he wanted to have travel around as an art show. I always thought that was so beautiful. Thank you for that. I'm sure it's much, much more complex, but the idea of the other and the fact that the virus has us all suddenly together really offers an opportunity and we can see how we're influencing each other. And just as you mentioned right here, we have Colombia and then LA imagery. This is definitely a factory of incredibly crazy imagery that's influenced the world in good and very bad ways. Um, and then of course, Austria and the whole other world in Vienna. So here we are. This normally wouldn't happen. I wanted to visit uh, Bogota and Colombia and it never quite happened. So in a way, this helps create that sense of 
discussion and, and imagery becomes critical. So thank you for that. Thanks. And last but not least is Carlos. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK. Um, so I just wanted to say about uh, Kata's presentation, also the importance of having uh, this discussion now, in not only in this moment of time, but here for this festival. Like, um, it is uh, really, uh, I mean, to open a space for this kind of talk in a festival that is about society and art and science is uh, also giving this um, violence and this crisis in Colombia a, a space in the world, like different from, from the one it already has in the country itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I just wanted to like take a second to think about uh, like how these borders and frontiers have been created, uh, have appeared, and have disappeared. Like in the ones that the good ones that disappeared are the ones where, like, the respect for the other human beings it has disappeared. And uh, I think Kat already said the number, but it's uh, been in this year over 53 massacres, uh, which of the, the the rest of the world doesn't know anything about. So I and that's why we wanted to make a space, although we have been talking about frontiers uh, in art and science and diluting the frontiers through art and science, uh, like these kind of social borders and limits and mental as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Kata, for your presentation. Um, about Carlos, uh, he is an architect and he currently is researching a lot uh, about social behavior and self-organized projects and self-organized societies. So he is going to tell us more about uh, Suratomica and what like a possible solution for a possible eraser for the frontiers we are now going through or seeing. Welcome, Carlos. Hi, thank you, um, and thanks for the invitation, Victoria, and to the patients and everyone I, assisting. <laughs> I'm so pleased to hear about self-organization. That's my my pet subject. <laughs> cool, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, um, well. Firstly, well, I, I'd like to present that uh, this is where self-organization emerged as a plausible option to approach the problem already discussed by my colleagues. And though mm, defining it and explaining it might need a whole hour to discuss. So mm, in this case, self-organization in a nutshell might be represented by Suratomic in how it does, what it does and why it does it. Mm -hmm. So, mm, but well, but but first, um, what is Suratomica you, you, you were asking? And um, well, it's a, a collaborative and collective network with reciprocal and participation among its contributors. And anyone can engage in it and learn from others in that network. Um, thus, uh, making intrinsic motivation, it is crucial for that knowledge and exchange of knowledge to happen. So to promote that, um, the network can not be centralized, not, cannot be a centralized network mm -hmm. um, because that kind of network functions with one set of rules or guidelines and like a defined idea of how to view the world and those parameters. So Suratomica emerged as a, as a hybrid network between a decentralized and distributed one where everyone can propose topics to discuss, share their work, and collaborate on, on the creation of artistic and scientific work, and also like theoretical research, um, representing like one, one self-organization's principle, that it's a non-hierarchical structure. Uh, that it's why, like, that's almost like, that's sort of atomic. Um, well, correspondingly, because Suratomica appreciates life, 
and the diluted borders, the network centered itself on learning from other species, mm -hmm. like uh, avoid that anthropocentric uh, think uh, or viewing the world and and that to that those species that have like a self-organized structures so it can replicate them and function in a similar manner. Um, well, now to directly address the problem that was mentioned before, it's important to state that um, because culture is kind of a mixture of both, of both art and sciences under a perspective of life the union between them might significantly signify like a, a possible culture renewal and, the, and therefore could use self-organization principles to strengthen its core, like to promote that uh, life ideas. Mm, well, so the, the idea that of fostering a network that promotes the merging of arts and sciences occurred in, in response to what is happening in the world and our local reality, mm, together with the idea that science and arts modifies not, not only our physical context, but um, the way of seeing and living the world and also like appreciating life. Mm -hmm. um, so like to be more precise, um, this self-organized network believe that through the complementarity of art and sciences, it's possible to help and change certain social interactions and cultural productions, um, such as the like changing and th that massacres that, that that are happening in our country. Um, because like even though our country is very biodiverse, mm, like the diversity of thinking and the diversity in how we view the world. It's kind of uh, homogenizing and like in a hegemonic way of thinking uh, in all the countries and like with a here we call it like a narco totalitarianism mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why Suratomica's approximation to science has moved towards the frontier sciences or like life sciences or complex sciences that we call it like where sciences meet in those frontiers that we think that divide them. Uh, that, and so we think that these sciences, which is study the universe, life and complexity, it might help to change that uh, homogenizing uh, mm -hmm. uh, point of view, homogenized point of view. Well, um, in that approach, uh, um, and that, those approaches, well, the approach to that questions about possible words and how to imagine and create them. It's like uh, about how to think that life uh, can possibly ties itself even further and acquire like ad an additional degrees of freedom as a complex ad adaptive system. Mm -hmm. mm. So thanks to this in interest, interest, well, like, thanks to the interest of the people in like in arts, these artists, the scientists um, that are willing to acquire more knowledge and want more knowledge, like, and, and to learn uh, in a collaborative um, investigation system in this network called Sudartomica. Um, well, the frontier between arts and sciences has begun to like to weaver. Uh, but not only that, but like in a geopolitical frontier uh, topic uh, as well, uh, like enabling connections between diverse people from different countries, like it's happening today. And it, it was possible to influence like other aesthetics with uh, different ones uh, consistent of diluted frontiers and life. Um, along with uh, the birth of new points of view and uh, maybe the idea of changing things, not, not only like in a local scenario, but around the world, that, that, that's the idea. So uh, like, likewise, the, the network has helped artists interest in the universe and other scientific questions uh, or questionings interact with um, a different physicist network uh, 
and that turns to happen that we start to collaborate with a Com comep uh, network that are physicists mm -hmm. and also travel to certain facilities uh, thanks to the art at cms program that encouraged those same same artists to continue their research in their field of interest alongside the CERN scientists. Mm -hmm. um, it was also uh, thought of as a way of, to promote the exchange of different knowledge between art and sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, well, other scenarios made possible that this network um, that are the study groups. They, they, they are a self-organized method of spreading knowledge in the general population for free inside the network mm -hmm. and when these groups comes to an end uh, all the knowledge research and experiences will be open to anyone on the web so we will share the link to you and um, well um, and so it's relevant to point out that these groups have been proposed by different people Mm -hmm. each with a different concern or topic of interest that encourage well them to want to learn more about it and share what they already know with others and so creating groups of research uh, promote the dialogue creation and a certain workshops that has happened uh, so um, i like to point out some topics that we we managed and the topics were like very diverse such as on, on existing frontiers was the first one complexity and aesthetics dark ecology and hyper objects uh, quantum particles and creativity internet uh, deconstruction and reuse of web pages uh, zenith images uh, exploration and culture uh, collective uh, transmedia artwork production and social surf organization and possible utopian words. So as you can see, like th th these topics are evidentially managing like trans, multi and interdisciplinary fields. Also, as Natalia said, um, in disciplinary fields where the border uh, is diluted. diluted. Uh, we, we work these topics with experts in many of them, like uh, such as academics in, and professionals. And it's based uh, on the idea of mutual aid and uh, that knowledge shouldn't have any frontiers. So everyone gave a little a fraction of their time to promote and expand the knowledge for free. So this is why directly, well, Suratomica directly correlates with self-organization principles and how they can be used to build um, a network intended to promote a change in culture and different approach to art, sciences, and the way we all relate to each other to erase those frontiers. Wonderful. I love the idea of the study groups. Can you just... Um explain how it's propagated uh and uh let's say i have an idea and i want to discuss self-organized criticality and you and i are excited about it so then we announce it to the public and they sign up and it's free and then we have a set set of time and just a little more about that structure because i think this group needs to become one. <laughs> There's so much that needs to be exploded in this subject, and we have so little time. So we're just surfing, right, on the surface of all these very deep and heavy subjects. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, um, the, the, the groups are, um, are proposed by the people that are inside of the network. Any Anyone can be part of the network that, that's okay. the idea um, and well it becomes like uh, someone wanted to talk about some issue or some topic and uh, the, the network arranged some platforms like free freemium platforms uh, from google like mm -hmm. the, the one we're using now um, and uh, through meet um, uh, yeah, the 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 board that we're seeing and uh, 
Google Forms and classroom, everything. Classroom, I think. And, and classroom, exactly. That, that's the big one. Um, everyone shares their, their knowledge, uh, reunites, discuss the topic, um, like uh, everyone arranged like a, a schedule uh, when we are going to meet, uh, which is going which is going to be the topic that we're going to talk about now or tomorrow or whatever. And uh, the, the, the crucial thing is that um, professionals and theoricals and uh, people that are very well known in those topics uh, agree to help uh, in the in those discussions and um, and they taught us like how to re do the, the research and how to um, discuss uh, everything and the good thing is that no one really um, controls those groups they are very self-organized. Uh, everyone knows uh, the schedule. Just read before entering the the, the group, and um, or bring another topic that relates to 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 the other one, and and that's. And then, that's uh, Catalina can create a, a suitcase for those that don't have access. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are other groups that are like workshops, uh, a collaborative yeah. uh, wor uh, work uh, with art and sciences, or maybe just a pedag pedagogical and, and, and science or, or arts or anything can happen there. And, and that's the, the idea too. But it would require, sorry, it would require uh, a lead person or someone who filters and edits to some degree, because if, if you just have it completely open, which I've done also as experiments, you end up uh, diluting your message or the work. So d would you allow it to self-organize and then go back to it and edit, which creates another whole set of issues? Or would you uh, just see what evolves and some are successful and some are not? Yeah, yeah, like uh, in in all the cases, there there are like experiments. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's like uh, trying an error, but yeah. in, in others, uh, the people because they're they are in the network and want to be part of it, uh, they already have like a a, a right. knowledge to 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 bring to the group and. Uh, it's not very often that the, the error happens, yeah, but yeah. The, the experiment of um, managing like the social uh, interactions between mm -hmm. others and the respect, like who's going to talk or right. silence the microphone, th those little details uh, like also bring to life and uh, promote more, the, uh, spread the, the, the idea of uh, self-organization. Thank you. So, Daniela, we actually have very little time left uh, for your yes. public uh, whiteboard. So maybe you can talk about it and invite the public after the fact to go in. And we can do that also on our networks, uh, invite people to also this this lecture will be available right after uh, yes. this session, I mean, and um, Maybe that's the best way to use the last bit of time we have for you to mm -hmm. show the board and talk about it and invite yes. people to join. So the, the goal of these blackboards that we have used uh, to show you the information is that um, it is a link that we are going to post on the YouTube under the YouTube video. And the idea is that we get to know more ideas like this, like uh, self-organized art and science groups or ideas or projects uh, that are a tool for social change, like this one. Um, so we are going to leave it there and uh, you can just, I mean, in, this is super easy to use. You can just move the objects if you want to uh, comment something that you see. Uh, of course, the information is open um, for
for using um, in, in, in other spaces. And uh, Suratomica, you can see it uh, in, I mean, suratomica.com, you can see everything that we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wanted to take a, a second just to tell you at the end um, that it was super important also for, I mean, the, the reason we wanted to talk about the frontiers and the social and the political frontiers and to propose a solution for it is because people are being killed every day in Colombia. I mean, three days ago, I had a list of 185 people killed during 2020. And now in the last 24 hours, there have been three more massacres. So just go online and read about it and inform. And uh, just it's, it's important to know, to be able to propose solutions for these kinds of, of things. And every little solution like the ants that I'm, I'm seeing right now in uh, Carlos' presentation, um is is a is a solution i mean can become a big one and i strongly believe that self-organized uh, uh, projects like this one where we take care of the information and we create new knowledge and it's for free and we uh, share it with the world is a social tool for change all around the world. And not only for change, it is also a tool, uh, for example, to end the pandemic. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure of that, but we can talk about it later. So if you have any comments, leave them in, in the, under the YouTube video. And we, we are open to discuss anytime, any one of these topics. Thank you very much for the. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you for bringing this to the public's attention. It was very much my intent to bring this early on in the program, because I think that um, the way we started was in the botanical gardens in Los Angeles uh, with Dr. Victoria Sork, and she was talking about climate change and nature and natural systems, ecosystems, and also what's going on with all the fires here in Los Angeles, but also for instance, uh, deliberate uh, deforestations uh, in Brazil, for instance. And, and all of this of course is connected, but I felt that going from that garden straight into like the epicenter of really violent uh, disasters going on, that they're connected also to this country in, in many different ways that we haven't really touched on um, is, is important to bring as your voice to these kind of festivals that tend to get technocentric sometimes or, you know, highly in the air philosophical. So the idea of self-organized um, criticality and, and us coming together from different locations and continents to bring awareness up, I think is really important. And I see you even not even mentioning your artwork. So it's become a very passionate thing to you. So I will just end by asking you, Daniela, um, is this entering into your artwork? Are you planning a work with these subjects? Is this kind of a research phase for you? Well, Definitely. I mean, as you know, my my artwork has always been very focused on life and on uh, chemical. Uh, I mean, on the on the chemical structure of life, and I have been researching carbon as the element of life. And the piece that you saw was about the elements that build up the human bodies and so on. And my thesis, my master thesis, uh, in collaboration with CERN, was about finding um, a solution for the project what is the for the for the question what is the difference between living and non-living matter so it actually relates now completely to the social topic yeah. so i am using this uh, hypothesis i wrote about this force of this new force in nature that builds life um, and I am bringing it to the lives that have been uh, struggling and the lives that have been ended through this pandemic. So 
Thank yes. you it so is much. Part thank of it. Thank you so much. We need more artists like you. And thank you, Natalia, Carlos, Catalina. And we will be in touch. So we'll we'll say goodbye. Give me your hands. Goodbye. <laughs> your elbows. Bye. Thank you for this space. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, thank thank you Victoria. You. Thank you, Lani. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.